Hey guys, welcome to beautiful, warm Arizona. We're checking out the Pedego Comfort Cruiser. It's a 2021 model. I haven't looked at this bike for several years and the company, it dates all the way back to 2007. Don DiCostanzo, one of the co-founders, he was into regular bikes and thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool to do an electric bike? So he started out by using conversion kits with other companies' frames, but there were wires hanging around and they weren't necessarily built to handle the extra weight and power. This is actually the classic frame design here, kind of that cantilever high step. They also have a step through that's more approachable. These guys are known for having fun, intuitive and powerful electric bikes. Uh, in some ways, when I say classic and intuitive, they, they haven't changed a lot over the years. They've been refined and I think this speaks to how well they work. I mean, from the very beginning, it was kind of simple. You had a twist throttle, which they still have. You've got this fun frame that it gives you a comfortable ride because the handlebar swept back a little bit. It, it makes it easier to reach without bending forward. So you've got this upright body position. It's a steel handlebar and that tends to dampen some vibration. This big, comfortable, oversized cruiser saddle with some rubber bumpers on it. You don't need a seat post suspension. You got these balloon tires right here. I think these things are a uh, pretty great range in terms of tire pressure. It's like 30 to, to 80 PSI, that's an, it's really wide. You don't usually see that. What it means is you can lower the tire pressure and get that kind of bouncy comfort if you want, or you can raise the tire pressure and be a little bit more efficient. Even these checkerboard tires, they're, they're kind of this hybrid design that could take you on gravel and you're still gonna feel fairly comfortable. They're 26 by 2.3, that's the, the measurement. So 2.3, they're fairly wide, but also very sturdy. This is a steel fork. It's rigid, no suspension, but steel, again, it has that vibration dampening quality about it. And I love the color matched rims right here and the chain cover, also steel. The steel has some great properties. It's strong and it's it's vibration dampening, but it can also rust. So, you know, one thing I look at if I have a bike like this is if it gets a little scratch, you can use some clear nail polish on it or sometimes uh, just car paint is gonna keep it going well. But they do tend to be very reliable and you also have the benefit of working with a shop. And I actually borrowed this from a shop right here. And I wanna introduce you to those guys and do just kind of a walkthrough. So I'm gonna kick you back there for a minute. Hey, so I think that's Steve and Sherry in the back. Pedego, Glendale, Peoria, Arizona. What a nice shop. You guys just moved into this, this bigger location, right? Yeah, we moved in here about a year ago. Okay. Uh, we've been in business for about four years and here about a year. Well, it's just wonderful. I've been in here chatting with you guys and you were talking about some of the new custom fenders and upgraded bikes. We got, I think I saw the boomerang mixed in there somewhere. and. It's just neat to see the accessories and to chat with you guys and get to, to look at one of the new bikes. What are you most excited about? What's the big seller lately? Besides everything, <laughs> right? Here it's everything, been pretty yeah. busy. I mean, it's it's uh, hard to pick one bike, but I mean, we've been selling like crazy. Um, I would say the step through interceptors are probably, you know, the best seller. Okay. I mean, yeah. From day one and, you know, and it just keeps selling. We've got a lot of different colors. Um, lot, you know, we've got different sizes we have. 24 inch step through interceptors we have 26 and now we have a 29 inch platinum interceptor too oh and so the platinum has the suspension it is very cool big bikes and you've got multiple battery choices it's one of the things i was going to discuss again we're looking at the comfort cruiser and that one now 1995 i mean it's a pretty that's a it, they've lowered the price and it's a great bike it's really proven over the years right yeah and they added the pedal assist to it so that makes it a great a great choice bingo thank you for calling that out that's a that's nice a nice feature you know you're you can just enjoy the ride and pedal right. along well i'm gonna get out there and you know do some riding but it's so fun to see the shops by the way what's the most popular accessory bin because you've got just so many cool ones you're gonna show them show them off yeah. steve the trunk bag uh actually it's called a convertible bag goes on the back of the bike oh nice and you've got velcro straps one goes uh, you've got two for the front and then two for the rear you've got a bottle holder i love that yeah. you know that right. and, and we've even got the bottle cages on either one of the two exactly. models that's exactly and then this opens up on the side okay and then you've got two paneers right here on either side beautiful um and it's reflective i was gonna say they did a great job with this with some of the safety features and I, i've always loved the the white sidewalls and kind of the classy looks of these things you do rentals, and one of the things you were talking about is these helmets, or they turn-by-turn -turn directions. Can you describe that to yeah. me? Pedago developed an app, mm -hmm. so it's the tour app, so every Pedago location can create their own kind of self-guided tour. Huh. So they can either just do it through their phone or through 
these R1 Evo helmets. So oh, see that? They're, they're an advertiser on the right. site. They're pretty cool. They make motorcycle helmets, right. and now they do e-bike yep. helmets. Yep. That's so you sweet. can connect on these. You can connect unlimited helmets uh -huh. with all your friends to go riding. You can talk to each other. You can answer your phone, listen to a book on tape. Um, so they're great. We sell a lot of these as How well. How wonderful. And then your ears are still free, so you get Correct. protection. You can hear the surroundings, but you get... Now, are you the ones who narrate this? Am I going to hear Steve and Sherry no, out there? actually, it's Dwayne, <laughs> who is our uber wonderful employee. He, hey. he was one of our first customers, um, and he is a retired guy. He came back to us after he bought his Ridge Rider and said, hey, you know, I'm retired. I'd love to, you know, work in your shop. And so he works for us three days a week. He does all of our tours. Cool. So we have some custom tours that we provide and he did um, the narration for our two tours right on Dwayne yeah, good Dwayne's shout out the best. And, and you know bikes it, it's warm here my my dad lives here and it's it's nice that it's warm but sometimes you want to get on a bike to kind of stay cool and then an right. e-bike is just another level right. so thank you so much it's really been an honor to get to speak with you and have this little break thanks for shutting yep. the door for yep. us and uh, I'm really enjoying the bikes great Okay, so we've got to see the shop a little bit. I, I want to dig back into the details on this. My goal is to be really thorough. And back at the site, Electric Bike Review, I've listed all the measurements. I do this by hand. I measure the length, the width, and the width's fairly relevant here because these are wider handlebars and the brakes stick out. A lot of times if you're going through a doorway, you might even touch the, the door frame and kind of make these lines on it. So be careful. You can get through, just kind of go slow and easy. I measured the weight, you know, 58.9 pounds, as you see here with the 36 volt 10 amp hour battery. Of course, you can upgrade to 36 volt 15 amp hours for 540 watt hours of capacity, especially if you're someone who's a bit larger, maybe you're using the throttle a lot, or you know you want to go for longer distances. Maybe you get one of those optional bags or panniers or something. It's nice to have the extra juice and only 300 bucks for that. So I've been very impressed that Pedego has managed to, to lower their prices over the years. And 1995 stock for this is pretty good for a bike that's sold through a dealer. And you saw how friendly these guys are. They're going to help you out. You can try the bikes out, kind of get fitted and get some service. If you do get a flat tire, I mean, we've got these uh, puncture resistant sort of slime tires that are in there. And it's just going to help you not have to go into the shop quite as much. Well, this one has a seven speed drivetrain and it's upgraded. It's 12 to 32 teeth on this Shimano Acera. So that's a nicer derailleur. It just means you're going to have more gear options and an easier time starting or climbing if you do shut the battery off or if you run out of juice or something like that. So I, I really love to see that. I, I like that the rack has been a little bit, you know, kind of updated over time. You'll see this is a bungee loop down here, so you can use a bungee cord. A lot of times panniers that you get have a, have a hook in the bottom. So that was really thoughtful. It is thicker. This is non-standard gauge on the tubing but it, it works very well with sort of the velcro trunk bags and stuff and then you've got this kind of a clamp thing on the on the top here for those simple quick quick items i like that pedigo has so much of this is is co-branded i i think these are probably welgo pedals but they say pedigo they're some of my favorite pedals they're very wide very stable and they've got these built-in pins they're not super sharp but they do give you great traction excellent and then if we we come back up to the front of the bike of course we have all the reflectors and stuff that you'd expect but look at these wires they're pretty clean considering how far they have to go and we've got these disconnect points where you can swap parts out if something gets damaged over time and then they've routed them right through the frame so this is a purpose-built electric bike frame it's not just a kit or something that was connected to the bike i think they've been fairly thoughtful about where they've done the routing and again that's the quick disconnect cable for the motor if you do get a flat or you have to do some work that is very handy so you're not having to balance everything and stretch the wires or whatever uh a kickstand here they've still got the center mount kickstand this is something i kind of complain about sometimes because if you cycle the crank backwards you get the pedal lock and that happens if you're if you're backing the bike out of a garage so just kind of keep that in mind you can sort of tip the bike up like this pedal forward a little bit and then you'll be able to stow the kickstand it's it's a little bit of a gripe but given that these are heavier bikes and some of the upgraded versions like the platinum interceptor they, they've got the big suspension fork up front so I you know again heavier bike I feel like having the kickstand at the middle is acceptable and it's got that adjustable foot so you can extend it depending on how flat your parking surface is uh, given that this bike is fairly heavy it's nice that we've got 
a powerful motor. So this is Pedego branded, but I believe it's actually a Dapu hub motor. I think it's a 500 watt, 35 Newton meter, planetary geared hub motor. It's silver, it matches the spokes and stuff, blends in very nicely. This is this is a good motor. It's it's powerful enough that with the twist throttle it can give you a good start and it's quiet enough and smooth enough and it doesn't have any of this like drag that some of the older uh, direct drive motors would introduce. It doesn't have regenerative braking or you know fancy stuff like that, but what we found was you know the extra weight and complexity of regen braking on an, on an e-bike a lot of times it just wasn't worth the hassle. So I I like that Pedego has moved towards all of these planetary geared hub motors and it just looks so nice. And then of course the brakes, this is one of the more sort of standard or downgraded parts and part of how they probably keep this bike more affordable and what you get with the upgrades on the other ones. But I, I like that even though they're mechanical, they're not hydraulic, we've got these nice rubberized sort of ergonomic levers, four fingers, so you can really get a hold of those things and stop yourself if you need to. It's got that integrated bell they even have motor inhibitors built in. So there's a cutoff switch. So anytime you're pulling those brakes, you're not going to be fighting the motor, uh, whether it's pedal assist or throttle. The motor just completely cuts out when you pull the brakes. So I appreciate that. And then these large 180 millimeter rotors. So they didn't go 160. They, they went 180 front and rear. And then you can see the calipers here, Ben Gal. You know, it's not a brand I'm super familiar with, but it's been working just fine. And the 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 brake lever that can sometimes be a little bit problematic with mechanical brakes is the right one. That's usually stopping the rear wheel. And you can see how much further that cable has to go. And over time, it can kind of wear in on these uh, housings, but they're using really nice housings. Jaguar, that's, a, that's name brand. So I really feel like where it counts, they spent the money, they got the nicer stuff. And again, the brakes are working really well. It's enough to stop this bike, whether it's the, you know, 58.9 pound or the 61.6 pound with the upgraded battery. And again, that's about $300. So it feels like you can get away with the stock bike for around two grand, but then you, you start adding up the price of if you want the optional steel fenders and get those really nicely matched with the chain cover or maybe you want a suspension seat post. This is a 27.2 millimeter rigid aluminum alloy post and it's 300 millimeters long. It's not 350. So you use a little bit of a limitation on how high you can put it. I like that the saddle and everything's positioned with enough room so that you can use one of the trunk bags. You're not colliding like they, everything's spaced appropriately. And then if you do get a suspension seat post, you're just gonna be reducing that back and neck pain if you are going on bumpy terrain. I feel like the handlebars, as we discussed, they already do a good job. And look at this stem, it's 100 millimeters. It's, it's steep, I think this is 30 degrees. So it's up, it's bringing the handlebars back to you as we discussed. The bike feels very comfortable and solid to me. Uh, and back here to the drivetrain for just a second. So I, I mentioned that's 12 to 32 teeth. We got a 44 tooth steel chain ring up front, not narrow wide. There's no chain guides or anything, but this is a cruiser bike. It's kind of a neighborhood casual ride. I've, I've done a little bit of off-road here. No problem, I'm not, I'm not dropping the, the chain or anything. A couple other quick mentions. We got these thicker 12 gauge spokes, very sturdy. They help to offer that higher weight capacity on these bikes, even though officially they just say 250 pounds, 36 hole rims. Up here, this is actually pre-wired for a headlight. Now it doesn't come with one, but it does come with that integrated rear light, which is actually built into the battery. And we'll show you that once we get into you know, turning the bike on and everything. But I think that's nice. And then the some of the hardware up here, this is 25.4 millimeter bore on the handlebar. And this is a quill stem, so it can kind of go up and down a little bit. This is all sort of old fashioned cruiser type of hardware. It's not 31.8 millimeter. Just keep that in mind if you decide to get sort of a narrower handlebar because you're, you know, hitting the door all the time, or maybe you just prefer that. Again, I've listed those specs back at the website just to help you manage this bike a little bit better and know what to expect. They're using great parts, they all work together well, but they're slightly different than hybrid and mountain bikes that you might see. One of the other things I really like about Pedego, in addition to the whole dealer network thing, is that they have this five-year prorated warranty. So for the first three years, it's pretty much comprehensive, but after that, there's some differences on the pricing. And I'm gonna kick you back to the shop again. Just if you're gonna get a Pedego bike, um, we recommend getting a lock because the bikes come with a five-year warranty and if you buy one of our locks There's two choices you have either the chain locked 
or you have a foldy lock. Huh. Uh, the chain lock is $99 and the foldy lock is $129. Um, and those come with a five year theft warranty. Oh. So if somebody picks it, cuts it, and steals your bike, then Pedego will replace your bike for up to five years. That's pretty incredible. Oh yeah. And yeah, I was reading, it's kind of this prorated five year thing too, where it's like the first f three years, your battery's completely covered. And over time, these batteries degrade. So right. they have like a partial replacement right. coverage. Right, right. So the way Neat. that it works on the batteries is uh, the first three years is fully replaceable. Uh -huh. The fourth year, uh, you get a discount of 40% off the battery. And then the fifth year, it's 20% off. So, uh, you right. know, by that time, you might want a new battery anyway. It's a neat program because the battery is one of the more expensive parts of the bike. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you got tires, the slime tubes, and all kinds of stuff back here. This The seat posts, suspension seat posts. I'm a big yes. fan of those. Yes, yes. Pedals and all kinds of stuff. Even, actually, for people who don't know, you know, the Comfort Cruiser, it does come in the step-through version, 24 or 26-inch uh, wheels. And with this, this crossbar adapter, you can hang it on those car racks a little right, easier, right? right. Stick. You really just got a lot of great accessories. And one of the benefits of working with a dealer, you can try the bikes, and then you've got some sort of service and setup, right, that kind of stuff right. here too. These right. bikes, uh, you know, aren't light, so. We have a mechanical lift. We can lift the bikes up. We've got dual sides, so yeah. When it sounds like you're expanding, you mentioned you're looking for another mechanic or something yeah, too. Yeah, right, we are. Good so, for you. Uh, if you're still... in the Arizona area, Peoria or Sun City, that's right. kind of a fun a fun job. You get to work with bikes and stuff. Okay, guys, so you know we're looking at just the, the Comfort Cruiser. That's the most affordable model, but there are, there are several upgrade options, and we happen to have one right here. This is the Intercept. It's the next step up. Can you tell me what the differences are, what yeah, you're getting? Yeah, so it's still the 26 inch wheels like this one. Um, what you're upgrading on this is you're going from a 36 volt battery to a 52 volt battery. Oh wow. Okay, and um, there's a lot of creature comforts on the Interceptor that aren't on the Comfort Cruiser. Uh -huh. So one of the things is, is that um, it has an integrated light. Um, it has an upgraded LCD. We also have hydraulic brakes. Um, we have the leather grips. Oh, yeah. The leather seat. And is this part of this? this yes. Seat post yes. suspension. Yep. And it's a suspension seat post that comes with the interceptor. Um, plus, this has the balloon tires. With the, ke I see K guard. It's kind of a Kevlar puncture protection. Right. Right. Exactly. These are the fat Frank Schwalbe uh, tires. So this only comes in three colors, a Comfort Cruiser in three colors. That's right. Uh, the Interceptor, you have your choice of several different colors. Um, and plus we also, for those tall people, we have a 29 inch classic. And then we also have a 29 inch step through in the Interceptor. Wow, okay, so the wheel size for people who might not be familiar, 26 is kind of your standard size. If you get the, the larger wheel, it raises the platform, a little bit lower attack angle, higher volume, kind of for a bigger rider. Right. And right. then the 24 inch, it brings the whole thing closer to the ground. Right, And right. those tend to be very sturdy too, which is right. cool. Right, exactly. Can you upgrade to the mag wheels on these ones too, or is yeah. that only for yeah. the... Yeah, so um, we have the mag wheels here. Yeah. So the mag wheels are a $400 upgrade over the regular wheels. Um, and so it gives you, uh, it's gonna be a little bit more sturdy. You're not gonna have to uh, adjust the spokes, you know, with the mags and they clean up a lot easier too. That's right, they look really fantastic. And I read something, it's like, I think the max weight rating on these bikes, they say something like 250, but when, you know, you get to the mag wheels. You're the, looking at 325, somewhere around in that area. I, I, the companies, a lot of times it's like, well, I don't wanna put a number on it, but wasn't there the, the Brenda or the lady who kind of lost a lot of weight yeah. riding the bikes? Yeah. And she yeah. was definitely a heavier lady. And yeah. I, it's like, these bikes are pretty tough. They exactly. can really handle it. Exactly. She lost 277 pounds. Wow, she lost that much. Right. She lost more than the, the <laughs> official capacity. That's intense. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Exactly. So, and she had a city commute, commuter too. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a great model. That was one of my first e-bikes years ago in yeah. Austin. And those come in mags as well. I like that uh, there's even one more upgrade here. Is this like the Platinum right. Interceptor? So it's right. the same classic kind of cantilever frames, but you get the suspension fork. And I, I think, what else do you get when you? So with the Platinums, you get the suspension, um, you get an upgraded suspension seat post. Oh yeah. Um, and then it goes to a 10 speed drivetrain. Um, Instead of just the seven that right, we got here. Right. One of the additional speeds. things uh, with the Platinum versions is you have the ability to upgrade to a 52 volt, 17.5 amp hour battery. Oh, wow. So you're talking between 70 and 80 miles, you know, range with that. Can this one also do the 29er wheels and stuff? Yep. It's uh-huh, yep. Okay. These are all, uh, all of the 
Platinum models can also do the mag wheels in either the 24, the 26, or the 29. Yeah, we look at this, we got all, kind of all, a bunch of the different ones here. Well, and I love the colors, and it's it's really interesting how they've built around this, this platform. And right. uh, I appreciate you giving me some of those insights yeah. on the upgrade path. Sure. <laughs> Great job. Thanks. It feels like this bike has really done well over the years, and I, I just love that it's gotten a bit more affordable, and that you can get the step through. You can get the 24-inch wheels. You can get the 36-inch wheels. You can get the high step like we see here. You can get several colors. So there's like this dark metallic blue or metallic red as we see here, and then there's this coral pink with teal rims really beautiful stuff whatever you choose and the sidewalls while they're not reflective on these tires that's still a highly reflective color white so i feel like safety wise whether you upgrade and get the you know 45 dollar headlight which is it's really cool that it runs off the main battery whether you do that or not whether you get the fenders it's a it's a pretty good uh, platform all around so Let's go over here and check out the Charger because this is another upgrade, kind of a bonus. It's Pedego branded, weighs like 1.9 pounds, but it is a four amp charger. So that's a faster than average output. Most chargers I see are just two amps. It's just gonna fill that battery faster. And it's nice that because they have these upgrade options, you're not gonna be stuck with a slow charger. This is the charging port on the battery. You can charge it on or off the bike, which is wonderful. And here's the fuse. It's nice that they're thinking about safety. There's this on off switch, which when it's on the bike, it's kind of facing down. It's nice to be able to sort of shut the bike off and that way people can't tamper with the display because this does have a twist throttle. If someone turned it on, they could be you know, messing with the bike and stuff. So I feel like that's good. And it's also, it's got this like built-in sleep function that if you aren't using the battery for a long time, uh, it kind of shuts itself down and tries not to degrade. Extreme heat, which in Arizona could be a factor, that can degrade the cells over time. So it's nice you can take that off and bring it inside with you. The 10 amp hour st standard battery, that one weighs about seven pounds. And if you upgrade to the 15 amp hour, I think it's closer to nine and a half pounds. So keep that in mind. Extreme cold can also be kind of tough on the cells. I don't think it damages them quite as much as the heat, but it is gonna shorten your, your ride. It's sometimes even half the distance just because the cells are really cold. Keep that in mind. I just love it when you can charge the battery on or off the bike. The big complaint I have with these batteries is just that they are positioned high and in the rear. So seven pounds that might otherwise be down centered, which, you know, a lot of competing products that's where they put the battery instead it's way up high in the rear and that does probably reduce the the total capacity of this rear rack I'm guessing kind of 50 pound range that's usually the case I didn't see the details on this uh, from the official Pedego site and I'm you know you kind of wonder about child seats and all of that might be something worth asking the shop about but regardless seven or nine and a half pounds in the back you can get this like crack the whip kind of feel on the bikes, especially the step through. I mean, it's got two tubes and there's like a crossbars between them. They're doing their best to make them stiff and to give you that reliable, you know, I, I'm trying to communicate to you like some frames, you just feel it flexing a little bit or there's even this wobble thing that can happen. It's a lot easier for that when, when you have weight on the rear of the bike. So between the heavier build, the rear mounted battery, the kickstand, and just some of these things that are common to cruisers, some of these compromises, those are the real trade-offs I'm thinking about. Uh, but if I was looking at a cruiser bike that looked similar online versus one that you get from a Pedego shop, I mean, it's, it's hard to understate the value of being able to work with them and getting the tune-ups and stuff like that. Uh, and they're just friendly. So anyway, with that said, Let's put this battery back on the bike. Kind of lift it up like this. I love that you can actually slide this in and it just clicks right in, even if we didn't have the keys in there, which is nice. I love that you can take the keys out and they give you three of them, so you're not gonna be uh, missing out if you, if you lose the keys. It's spring-loaded, so you have to turn it like that and then you can pull out. That's sort of how this works. I'm gonna take these off so they don't rattle during our ride test. We've got a a voltage indicator here so we've got a full battery and then light so you can you can turn the light on anytime even if the bike isn't turned on that was very thoughtful that's a really good safety option well, i brought the bike over into the shade because i thought it might be easier to see the display but this is a grayscale like monochrome it is backlit but I even when it's not like it actually is fairly visible in bright light which is nice it's kind of this black and white thing versus some of the color displays it's not at the center there's lots of room here to put additional accessories or 
cup holders and speakers and all kinds of fun stuff. But right here, you know, it's a display with the buttons built in. So they're keeping it really simple and there's just fewer wires because of that. However, we do have a full size USB type A charging port down here. I mean, that is fantastic. So if you do get the speakers or something, you're able to, to run those right off that battery pack. And just another reason to upgrade to the higher capacity pack. So if you remember back here, there's that power switch on the bottom. We make sure that that's in the on position and then press the power button here. It boots up very quickly. And now I'm gonna enable backlighting by holding the plus button for a few seconds. Okay, now, and, and if we had a light in the front, it would also turn on the light. And, you know, of course, in the rear as well. So it's it's a bright day. There's some glare. Hopefully you can see this decently. I can. We've got, you know, five ticks on the battery infographic. Leaves something to be desired. It'd be nice to have 10 or a percentage readout, but this is kind of common on these more basic displays. Speed, it's in miles per hour. We're in the US right now. Assist level zero is the default, which is great. Throttle doesn't work pedal assist doesn't work. And while we're on the subject, look at this nice pedal assist sensor here. It's that black ring. It's very, very tight. It's small. It's, it's water resistant. In the old days, you had the bigger discs with magnets that were exposed and they could throw errors a little bit easier. So this is a nice upgrade. And the Comfort Cruiser didn't always have pedal assist. They used to just be throttle only. So this is a nice, a nice upgrade. As soon as we start pressing the plus button, we're going from zero to one, two, three, four, five. Those are all varying levels of pedal assist with five being the highest. But at any time, you can override with the throttle and get full power. So I'm the kind of person I like to ride in level two or three, get a little bit of exercise. We got that nice 12 magnet responsive cadence sensor. But let's say I need to catch up to a friend or climb a hill or cross a street from standstill and I, I forgot to shift down on my gears. Boom, you hit the throttle and this thing just takes right off. It's wonderful. And then if we go all the way up to six, this is throttle only mode, okay? So the idea is some people, you don't wanna have a surprise with pedal assist. You just say, it's just me, I'm pedaling, but you still want that throttle active. Well, they give that to you with level six. So I like that. And then we've got a headlight indicator that's, that's on right there. In order to use the USB that we were talking about, I think we need to hold plus and the power button for a second. And there's a little icon that says, okay, USB is active. And we can turn that off as well. Down here, we've got the odometer readout. If we press the power button, it cycles through. We get trip, distance, time, max speed, and back to odometer. So a lot of good feedback on this. There, It's not quite as fancy as some of the displays that give you a range estimate and other things, but on a bike like this, it's like, well, that's it's kind of, it's okay. And, and they're trying to give you a value price point, which makes sense. Plus and minus, if we hold those, we get into the settings menu and we can cycle through by pressing power. So we go from this menu to the next menu. What's our top speed and what's our wheel size? Are we in miles per hour or kilometers per hour? And then the pedal assist levels. It's a lot of good feedback. And then I feel like if we hold plus and minus again, we exit. That is the display. I, I love that. So having the USB, having it be fairly reachable and intuitive and the monochrome, maybe it would have been easier to see out in the sun. So for me, it's like, you know, that's that's fairly readable. Look at that. Yeah, I, I'm a fan of it. I feel like the technology they chose really fits the bike. Okay, the path is clear. The only thing left to do is take it for a ride. We're already powered up. Stow that kickstand. And then uh, I'm going to take this down to level five so that we've got pedal assist. I want to show you how quickly it responds. And then talk a little bit about the shifter over here. This is something that is a bit of a trade-off to me because you, it's like you have to reach and you're using your thumb for these, you really have to kind of push far for some of these lower gears. But I think they chose this because it works really well if you're wearing gloves. It's got this nice big readout on top. It's very intuitive. And it's sometimes those trigger shifters down here, they require finer motor skills. And then the housing can collide with the throttle housing, which you see there's a cable a port right there. So um, with that said, I'm just gonna start pedaling. Yeah, maybe a slight delay on starting, but it cuts out very quickly. And remember, you can override with the brake levers at any time. Now, one of the things I like to do is the no hands test, which is, 
it works okay on this bike, but you'll see we're kind of swooping back and forth. I think that's because it's heavier and kind of because of the rear battery. Like the, the gravity, the center of gravity on this bike is just a little bit higher, but it's doable. It tracks pretty nicely, especially with these 26 inch wheels. And while we're up here, look at these nice grips and stuff. They, they work pretty well. They're not quite as generic as, as some of the grips I've seen. They're, they're nice. They feel good on my hands. And one of the upgrades is kind of these like padded leather grips and you can swap the saddle out and stuff too. Really zips. Yeah, I've always felt like the Pedego bikes were, were fairly powerful. we go we're up right at that 20 mile per hour top speed this is a class 2 electric bike because it has a throttle as well as pedal assist and uh, yeah it's just a lot of fun I'm gonna ride along in the highest level of assist so you can really hear the motor and you can see how quickly it starts and stops based on pedal assist to start I'm also gonna go off-road a little bit so maybe you hear just any noises there are no fenders on this bike right now um, so that's not stock so it should be pretty quiet, but I've noticed sometimes the chain can actually bounce into the, the cover. Otherwise, I feel like it's a really quiet, solid bike. Maybe the kickstand occasionally can get that little bounce sound. without any assist in the lowest gear. It's actually doable, which is kind of cool for an almost 60 pound bike. And here's the throttle. brake test at the end there and responded really nicely. <laughs> Let's see how he does, folks. I heard he's a professional. I appreciate that, Steve. Thanks. So that is the Pedego Comfort Cruiser. It's been really fun to ride this bike after so many years. I've, I've looked at it several times in the past and I'm really pleased with what Pedego has done and, and thankful to the dealer here who uh, spent some time with us. I hope this helps y'all. I've got the details back at the website, electricbikereview.com. I've got people leaving their own feedback, posting their own pictures and stories in the forums there so you can get the straight scoop. And uh, I hope I see you on the trail. I love you. Ride safe.